Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 17, Regular Expressions, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about how to write Python code inside of Rust. Regular expressions come with the standard library of Python, therefore you can use them everywhere Python is installed, just like that. For Rust, you will have to use a crate. One very widely used one is called regex. And uh, there's way more choice though out there. You can pick and choose the feature set that you will require for your regular expression library. Additional concepts I will introduce with the example code in Rust will be raw string literals. This is very handy because oftentimes in your regular expression you have to use escape codes. Then uh, the, la the lazy static macro, that's also from an external crate that is very helpful if you need to lazily initialize a static at runtime. And that can be very useful if you only need to do stuff once and that needs computation. And of course, how you would handle standard input handling, since we are doing regular expression handling, this comes sometimes hand in hand. And on top of this, I uh, included a very long and complicated regular expression as an example, how you can use a more complicated and bigger one. Let's hop over into the code. On the left, as usual, we have the Python code as usual. At the very top, we have the regular expression library from the standard imported, and we use uh, sys to have the standard input handled. This is the library with the crazy regular expression I will show you later. In order to copy what more or less the Rust code is doing, I have the global variable re, so the regular expression, that I will use here in my check function. I will check if this is none. If it is none, I will actually compile the regular expression, store it into the global global variable, and afterwards I will run the match on it. So if we run the is proper date function multiple times, it will compile the regular expression only once. And this effort is only needed to be done once, so that's a fairly clever move to do. If we look at the code on the right in Rust, we also get the standard IO to treat the standard input. Then we use the lazy static macro and we implement and we import the regex module as well. This is again prepared for the crazy regular expression. Here we have the same check function and here this lazy static macro more or less does the same as this uh, trick with the if regular expression is non-check. It basically makes sure that this static reference reg re, so same variable name of type regex is only initialized once in the code. Basically, this builds a similar construct as we see here for you. And later down, we can use this re variable as if we had written manually all this code necessary to actually do lazy static initialization. Now, in the main, on the left in uh, Python again, so we are tell the user how you can actually quit from our standard input thing. Then we read in a loop from the standard input. We get rid of the new lines that are in there. Then if the text is quit, as we explained to the user up here, it will actually break the loop, therefore end the whole application. And this, is basically a one-line expression that says if we have a proper date, so this regular expression says uh, true for the line giving in, we will assign to this yn variable a space. And if this is false, this will write not into this variable. And then here in our print, we can use the line that the person has entered and the yn to form a sentence. So whatever the user has put in is a date or is not a date. This was copied on the right as well. 
we create a buffer for our input. So this is now a mutable string that is empty at the start. We start a loop and we use the IOs library. So up here, standard IO, right? Standard in, read line method. Then we pass it the buffer. So our input variable that we've created up here. And uh, we handle errors by panicking out because actually we expect standard in to work fine. After that, we truncate the input. So as the command says, we get basically get rid of the trailing new line. Below we have the same check. If the input is quit, as we have printed in this line, we will break this uh, loop and end the application. And here we check for the date. And in the print line, we can now see if input, so same thing, input is a date. And here's the same one line expression. If is date is true, we use the space. And if it's false, we use the word not. And here we have to clear the buffer because in the next iteration of the loop, when we use the read line, this would append to it. And we want to only check the latest stuff that the person has inserted. Let's run uh, the Rust version only. That uh, should suffice to show how this works and what's going on. So we can see that um, the code complains because we are not using the is 8601 date function because this is for the future to explain. But here it already tells us type quit to exit. Now if we put uh, a text into the thing, so ASDF, it will tell us that it's not a date. If I now put um, 2020, whatever, October 3rd, it will say it is a date. However, if I now type 2021, February 31st, it will also tell me it is a date, which is not correct. It just has the same uh, expected format, but it's not uh, correct checking if this is a valid date it just goes is there four numbers with uh, dashes in between and that's it now if i type quit the application stops running now let's hop over to the code to see what happens if uh, we use the proper regular expression there's a link in the description below how you can find the reference of where I found the regular expression code. So if I now type the 2021-0231 example, it will tell me it's not a date, so the ISO check works. If we now look at the, the code of this, we come over to source ISO RS. At the very top, we can see that we cannot simply use the regex crate. We have to use the fancy regex crate because as is written here in the documentation, this regular expression uses spec references and look around and that's not supported by the basic regex crate. We can still use lazy static though, even though this is uh, a module inside our code. Um, we make this function public and uh, we use lazy static as we did before, but now we have this super long regular expression and you can see that um, here's like a backslash for the first uh, replacement it found and stuff like that. So in order to not have to escape all the backslashes that you can see in this code, um, also here for digit, you can use a raw string. So if you use an R at the beginning of the string, this will denote that this is a raw string. You simply use uh, the fancy regex type and we do the same. We use the ismatch and we have our check function written. In Python, let's um, quickly hop over to the Python code.
we have the same. In Python, you can also have raw strings. The syntax is the same. You use the R and afterwards the quotation marks to have a raw string denoted. This helps us in the same way. We have all those backslashes. We don't have to escape them. This is not equivalent code because I cannot simply overwrite the global variables value from the main module, right? But you can use uh, the func tools cache, for example, to only compute this regular expression or compile this regular expression once and then uh, use the match code. This is just to show that the standard regular expression module of Python is able to handle even complicated regular expressions. While the very widely used regex crate does not, you will have to use, for example, fancy regex to get this going. I hope this short introduction into regular expression was uh, helpful. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be command line argument parsing.